Namaste, welcome to Vinyasa Flow Yoga. My name is Michelle Chua, and for today's practice, you'll want to have a strap and two blocks. We're gonna continue this week's physical focus on opening up the hip flexors, bringing the hips into extension, along with um, loosening up the shoulders a bit, which was requested. So let's start in some form of hero's pose, something like this, if it feels appropriate for your body. You could give your knees some support by placing a block between your ankles to sit on top of. Make sure that your toes are pointing straight behind you. Knees are no wider than hips distance apart. And as with any of our physical postures and movements, if something does not feel appropriate in your body, please use your props, try a different variation of the pose or opt out. You can always take moments to rest, of course, as you pace yourself and truly listen to your body, as is part of our philosophical theme this week, Svadhyaya, which is the fourth Niyama. And the Niyamas are the practices within the second limb of the eight limbs of yoga. The personal practices that we do to help us to regularly connect with our inner being or true nature. So I just got back from a private Reiki session uh, with a person I just met and he told me after the session, or he asked me like, what if we could always feel this way? And I was like, what's this way? This feeling that of peace and equanimity that I, I have right now. And he's like, you know, what if like, all that busyness because he's he has a very busy job where he's running around constantly you know all of that was not my like the uh my my reference point my home base what if this was my home base and i looked at him and i said i believe this is your true nature like this is our you know essential self in the practice like reiki which is energy healing and yoga these different practices are about uncovering that right we can build up so much of you know things going on around us putting our energy in different places taking care of things or accumulating things that we don't need whether it be physical or mental emotional and kind of have this clutter of stuff, right? And this practice of Svadhyaya is to really see like, oh, what am I holding on to that's not really allowing me to be in that place, my true nature? And I asked him like, doesn't this feeling that you've arrived at after your session feel like home? And he said, yeah. I was like, well, then it is home. And so I think that's what our yoga practice is about too, is like coming home to ourselves, really feeling that sense of, ah, yeah, this is me. And so that's the point of these yoga practices and, and especially Svadhyaya, which is self-study, is watching the self that is really the different roles that we play the ego self and, and stepping back, panning out, panning out and really being in that place of like, oh, that's not the self with a capital S. The self is that home that I arrive at when I've shed all the unnecessary stuff. So let's take a look at what we've accumulated without judging ourselves, what we're carrying right now that we can maybe shed and get a little more in touch with that inner home. Start by beginning to scan your body mentally. Observing any areas of tension, aches, soreness, openness, lightness, heaviness, just anything you're feeling in your body.
Notice what you might be carrying physically right now and how that feels. Now begin to feel the breath a little more without changing how you're breathing. As you feel the qualities in which your breath is flowing, you can get a sense of your energy. Does your energy feel heavy right now? Does it feel light? Does it feel free? Does it feel stuck? How does your energy feel right now? And then bring your attention to your mind. In a similar way, notice the qualities of your mind, how you're feeling mentally. How are you feeling emotionally? So becoming more aware of what you're holding with you or carrying into the practice today, let's start to deepen the breath, grounding a little deeper into the present moment in the body, exhaling as you might be able to relax the body a little more into opening, inhaling as you renew life energy into the cells of the body. Exhaling, releasing, relaxing. As you keep on deepening your breath, bring to mind any of the things that had to happen for you to be sitting here now, beginning your connection inward through practicing yoga. These could be logistics of what had to come together today. This could be teachers of the past that brought you to your practice. Allowing a moment to be grateful for them. And knowing what's on your plate right now, what would you like to set as your intention for today's practice? Letting go of the burden of expectations and opening ourselves to recognizing that we are all in this together, I invite you to choose someone to dedicate your practice to. Together, let's join our voices chanting OM three times. Let in a deeper breath. As you continue to breathe slowly, let's balance the length of the in-breath 
with the length of the out breath, taking your time. And I'll invite you to continue to practice ujjayi pranayama, victorious breathing to help balance your energy as you approach the physical yoga. So closing your lips, softly constrict the back of your throat so that as you're just breathing through the nose, you can create a soft whispering sound. Through that sound, create a slow, gentle rhythm that you can listen to that allows you to stay connected to the breath and the present moment. As you listen to that sound, please start to gently lower onto your hands and your knees. Let's start with a few slow cat cows, Beatalasana. As you breathe in, glide your chest forward and roll your shoulders back and down. As you breathe out, contract your abdomen, dropping your head to round the back. Try that a few more times. Starting with these smaller movements, practicing vinyasa flow, which is breath-led, breath-paced movement. On your next exhalation, tucking your toes, lift your hips back into downward facing dog. Give your body a few breaths to explore any movement to loosen up, such as pedaling your feet, swiveling your hips, shaking or nodding your head. Continuing to regulate your breath to help regulate your energy. And bring clarity of mind for self-study. Now on your next inhale, raise your right leg behind you. As you breathe out, bend the knee and rotate the right thigh externally at the hip. Turn it out. As you breathe in, draw the left outer hip back. Exhaling, gently step your right foot beside your right thumb. Lower the left knee and tuck the back toes. As you breathe in, look up, kneeling lunge. As you breathe out, lift the back knee into pyramid pose, drawing the right hip back, straightening the legs to what's comfortable as you bow. Inhale, kneeling lunge, look up. Exhale again, pyramid pose. One more. Inhale, kneeling lunge, look up. Exhale, pyramid pose. Step back to downward facing duck. Inhale, raise your left leg behind you. Exhale, bend the knee and turn out your left thigh at the hip. As you breathe in, draw the right hip back. Then exhale, softly step your left foot beside your left thumb. Lower your right knee, keep the back toes tucked, and breathe in, look up, kneeling lunge. Breathe out to pyramid pose, lift the back knee, draw the left outer hip back as you bow like you have a flat back. Inhale, kneeling lunge, look up. Exhale, pyramid pose. One more time. Inhale, kneeling lunge. Exhale, pyramid. This time, step the right foot forward, top of your mat, feet hips distance parallel. Bend the knees generously and bring the hands behind you to clasp, maybe hugging the heels of the palms together. As you do the lift your chest, lower the shoulders back, gazing forward. Tilt your weight forward and exhale to bow even further, dropping your head freely. For a few deep breaths, you might even sway the spine as that little loosen it up. As you continue to stretch the arms forward, slightly bend the elbows to lift the shoulders and lengthen the neck. How is your breathing now? 
Release the arms and root down to your feet as you inhale to sweep the arms forward to rise all the way up to stand, raising the arms overhead, roll your shoulders back and down. As you exhale, trace your palms in prayer from your crown to your heart center, Padasana, Mountain Pose. Feel your intention for this practice. And let's offer gratitude to the sun, the source of life energy on this planet. Sun salutation, C. Inhale, sweep your arms forward, roll your shoulders back and gaze up. Exhale, bow forward from your hips. Place your fingertips on the ground as you inhale to step the left knee behind you to a kneeling lunge looking up. Hold your breath as you step to plank. Exhale as you lower knees, chest, then chin in Ashtangasana. Inhale as you slide forward and soften the shoulders back into a gentle cobra pose. Exhale as you lift the hips back to downward facing duck. Inhale, step your left foot beside your left thumb and lower the right knee, gazing up. Exhale, step the right foot forward and bow. Press through your feet. Inhale, sweep the arms forward to rise. Urdhva Hastasana. Exhale, join your hands together at your heart. Side two. Inhale, sweep your arms forward. Urdhva Hastasana. Exhale, bow forward, Uttanasana. Lower your fingertips. Inhale, step your right knee back, looking up, kneeling lunge. Hold your breath as you step to plank. Exhale, lower knees, chest, then chin, Ashtangasana. Inhale, slide through to Cobra, Bhujangasana. Exhale, lift your hips to Adho Mukha Svanasana. Inhale, step the right foot beside your right thumb. Lower the left knee and gaze up. Exhale, step the left foot forward and bow. Rooting down, inhale, rise to Urdhva Hastasana. Exhale, center your palms at the heart. Sun salutation A. Inhale, Urdhva Hastasana. Exhale, fold Uttanasana. This time, press your hands on your legs, blocks, or the floor, and inhale, lengthen forward to Ardha Uttanasana, half forward fold. Step into your version of plank pose, legs straight or knees on the ground, and this time, exhale, glide forward and lower halfway down, hugging the elbows to your ribs in Chaturanga Dandasana. Inhale to Cobra or Upward Facing Duck. Exhale into Downward Facing Duck. Pause here in stillness for two slow breaths. When you've emptied the second, walk or float to the front of your mat. Forward fold. Press with your hands and inhale lengthen to half forward fold. Exhale again, fold. Inhale, sweep the arms to rise, Urdhva Hastasana. Exhale, connect the hands in prayer. Again, inhale, Urdhva Hastasana. Exhale, Uttanasana. Inhale, lengthen to Ardha Uttanasana. Walk to plank or float to Chaturanga, decide how you'll practice your vinyasa as you tune into your body. Once again, pause in Downward Dog for two breaths. Let your eyes steady on one spot to help you focus.
When you've emptied the second breath, walk or lightly jump to the front of your mat, forward fold. Then inhale to half forward fold, Ardha Uttanasana. Exhale to Uttanasana. Inhale to Urdhva Hastasana. Exhale to Padasana. One more time. Inhale, Urdhva Hastasana. Exhale, Uttanasana. Inhale, Ardha Uttanasana. Step, float, or knees, chest, chin. Take it through your vinyasa. Downward dog, cultivate stillness for two deep breaths. Then walk or jump to the top. Inhale, Ardha Uttanasana. Exhale, Uttanasana. Inhale, Urdhva Hastasana. Exhale, Padasana. Let's step the feet together for chair pose, entering Sun Salutation B, Surya Namaskar B. Inhale as you bend your knees together and lean your weight towards your heels, raising the arms as you relax the shoulders, Utkatasana. Then exhale, shift your weight forward and bow from your hips, Uttanasana. Press with your hands, inhale to Ardha Uttanasana and take it to your vinyasa, follow your pace of breath. When you arrive in downward facing dog, keep your hips leveled and inhale, raise your right leg behind you. Exhale softly, step the foot beside your right thumb and spin the left heel down. Then inhale, rise to stand in warrior one. Ride your exhalation all the way down to continue your vinyasa. Breathing in as you lift the heart. Breathing out to downward facing. Side two. Inhale, raise your left leg while keeping the hips balanced. Exhale gently, step the foot beside your left thumb. Lower your right heel, then inhale, rise to Virabhadrasana one. Ride your exhalation all the way down into your vinyasa. Pause and downward dog, checking in with your body. Three to five breaths, cultivating stillness. If you need to rest, child's pose or something else, remember you have the choice. When your breath feels more calm, balanced, steady, empty it, then walk or jump lightly to the front of your mat, forward fold with feet touching, then inhale, half forward fold. Exhale, fold. Knees together, inhale, chair pose, lean back. Exhale, rise up. Last one, sun salutation B again. Inhale, Utkatasana, chair. Exhale, Uttanasana, fold. Inhale, Ardha Uttanasana, half fold. Step or float back into your version of vinyasa. Take your time here. Go at your own pace of breath. When you do arrive in downward dog, inhale, raise your right leg. Exhale the foot beside right thumb, lower the left heel. Inhale, rise to warrior one. Exhale, lower into your vinyasa. Mm -hmm. 
Side two, inhale, raise the left leg. Exhale the foot beside left thumb, right heel down. Inhale, rise to Virabhadrasana one. Exhale, lower vinyasa. Downward facing dog, pause. Slow down your breathing. Notice what's moving through you right now. What are you noticing internally? When you're ready, empty the breath before you walk or float to the front of your mat, forward fold. Feet together, inhale, half forward fold. Exhale, fold. Breathe together, inhale, chair pose. Exhale, mountain pose. So let's set the feet apart. Hips distance parallel, and we'll give the outer wrist a stretch in Padahastasana. So start with your hands on your hips. Inhale, roll your shoulders back. Exhale, hinge from your hips and bend your knees as much as you need so you're not rounding the back. Lift the toes and slip your palms face up underneath the soles of your feet. Try to get your toes to meet the inner creases of your wrists. Shifting your weight forward, breathe in and press your heart through the gates of your arms, drawing the shoulders back. Keep shifting your weight forward as you exhale to bow, completely relaxing your neck, holding the shoulders away from it, maybe by bending the elbows apart. How does your jaw feel right now? Might you flutter your lips to help relax it? How does your energy feel right now? Is there excess heat you might need to release through lion's breath where you exhale with a mouth wide open, releasing any sound, sticking out the tongue to cool off? As you sense the way your body feels at this point, choose the route that helps to balance your energy right now. Take a vinyasa, a few rounds of cat-cow, or step directly into downward facing duck. When you do arrive in downward facing dog, spread your fingers flat on the ground Rotate your triceps towards the earth, lifting your shoulders and hips way back. Firm in the belly and root down to, through the heels. Inhale, raise the right leg behind you and exhale, bend the knee towards your nose. Contract the belly and quietly as you can, step the foot beside your right thumb. Lower the back knee then inhale your arms overhead into a kneeling lunge, Anjaneyasana. So as you have your legs, hips width apart, not on a tightrope, bring the feeling as if you're dragging them towards each other without visibly moving your legs. So it feels stable here. Lifting your frontal hip bones, draw your tailbone downward and slightly towards your inner right heel. Lift the back ribs so you're actively stretching your lower back. Now let's hook the thumbs to create more stability here. Right underneath your shoulder blades, begin to tilt your chest up as you peel the shoulder heads back and soften them down. Starting to lift your gaze, lengthen the back of your neck. Now breathe deeply across your chest and all throughout the lungs. Last two breaths. Rising all the way up. Make sure that your stance, your legs, 
are close enough together where your left hip is directly on top of the left knee and your right knee is directly on top of the right ankle so we can prepare for a twist. Use the right hand to cup the top of your right thigh. Raise the left arm and root down solidly through your right leg. Breathe in as you lengthen your spine down the midline of your mat. Keep your pelvis and legs still and exhale, rotate your rib cage to the right little by little. Now either lower the left hand on a block or the floor inside the leg and raise the right arm. Or if you could go further and your balance feels stable, cross the left elbow outside of your right thigh. Either joining your hands in prayer towards the middle of your chest, opening the arms apart, or binding. You could also decide to lift the back knee and be up high on the ball of the left foot. Make sure the pelvis isn't turning. Then with each inhale, continue to lengthen your spine from your pelvis to your crown. Relax both shoulders down the back and with the exhales, keep your pelvis still and continue to spin your right ribs towards the sky for about three more breaths in this variation of twisting side angle pose or Parita Parjvakanasana. Now look at your right toes for a moment and lower your fingertips to frame it. Now you can have your hands in blocks if the floor feels too far. Shift all your weight onto your right foot, lift the left leg from the inseam so both hips are balanced in height and come into standing splits. So as you lift the left leg, turn the left outer hip slightly downward, tack the right hip back, and press down with your hands as you breathe in to lift the chest forward. Breathe out to continue folding towards the right leg. Some of you who might have a handstand practice in the middle of the room, you're welcome to go into that. Or if you want to challenge your balance in a different way, you can wrap an arm or two around the right calf. Try to relax the neck here. Last few breaths. Gently set the left toes back down to a lunge. Lower the back knee. And let's step back to downward facing. Pause for one deep breath. Notice how your body feels on each side. Then inhale, raise the left leg behind you. Exhale, bend the knee high towards your nose. Softly as you can, land the foot beside your left thumb and lower the right knee. Legs, hips width apart, sweep the arms overhead. Kneeling lunge. Bring the energy as if you're dragging the legs towards each other to create stability. Lift the frontal hip bones and draw your tailbone down and slightly forward. Then lift your back ribs. Let's hook the opposite thumb on top. And right into the shoulder blades, tilt your heart up while peeling the shoulders back and down. Deep breaths here. So not only are you opening up the fronts of the shoulders and chest, but your right hip flexor bringing it into extension. One more deep breath. Lifting the spine upright. Make sure you have a short enough stance where the right hip is directly above the right knee and the left knee is directly above the left ankle. Use the left hand to cup the top of the left thigh down, keeping the left leg still. Raise the right arm and inhale, lengthen your spine forward. At your waistline, exhale, begin to twist to the left, entering the same posture you tried on the first side if you can. Hand inside the leg, hook the elbow outside of it. Maybe lift the back knee. Then explore the range of your twist here, each new breath. Inhale as you lengthen, exhale as you continue to twist. Parita Parjvokanasana. One more breath. Now look at your left toes and frame them with your two hands on blocks or the floor. Shift your weight entirely into the left foot and lift the right leg from the inseam into standing splits. Try to keep the hips leveled. Inhale, lift your chest forward. Then exhale, continue to fold. Maybe you play with handstand, maybe you wrap an arm or two around the calf. 
Notice the quality of your breath here. Softly step back into downward facing dog. Come on down to your knees. And we're gonna go a little further into the hips into extension and supine here as pose. So either you're sitting on a block between the ankles like we did in the very beginning, or you're sitting on your calves, or maybe you're warm enough to gently move the calves aside and sit directly on the ground between your ankles, keeping the toes pointing back. Now, you might feel plenty of stretch happening in the front of your thighs and hips, keeping your spine upright, or you go a little deeper by leaning back slowly and really paying attention to the sensations in your body to let you know how far back to lean, keeping a balance in the breath, not overdoing it. Gonna be here for about a minute or so more. If you lean all the way back, make sure the knees stay on the ground, no wider than hips distance apart. You could opt to bring the arms overhead and hold opposite elbows, dropping the arms back. To protect your lower back, actively stretch the tailbone forward towards the space between your knees and soften the bottom of your front ribs in towards your back. One more deep breath where you are. Then take your time, several breaths to gradually lift your torso upright again. And this time we'll meet in a standing forward fold at the front of your mat. From there, take a strap with you and place the ball of your right foot into the loop of the strap if it has one or into the center of the strap. Holding the strap in your right hand, bend your knees and inhale to roll your spine upright to stand in mountain pose. All right, let's play with balance as we continue to bring the hips into extension and open up the fronts of the shoulders in dancer pose, Natarajasana also called standing bow. So as you hold the strap, and you may not need it, but at least you can start with it and then you can let it go if you don't want to use it. Turn the right palm to face up, bend the right elbow towards your right hip, and bring your left hand to your left hip. Keep your two frontal hip bones equally facing forward the entire pose as much as you can. Draw the frontal hip bone slightly up to activate the lower belly, and to direct the tailbone downward. Actively direct the tailbone downward. Now shift your weight into your left foot. Steady your eyes on one spot and steady your breathing. Bend your right knee to hug your left knee as you walk the right hand as close to the right foot as you can. Here's where you might let go of the strap if you're able to reach hold of the inner right ankle or foot. Then draw the tailbone down again. Kick the right foot back as if you're entering standing split while you pull the foot towards you. So those equal and opposite forces can sustain your balance while you raise the left arm and tilt your torso forward, lifting your chest. Remember that kneeling lunge when we're back bending? Find the area right under your shoulder blades to tilt the heart up. Tuning in for a few more breaths. When you're ready to land, softly step the right foot down next to the left, mountain pose. Let's join the hands in prayer at the heart and tune in for a couple deep breaths.
as you listen to your breathing, bring your right hand to your right hip. Now you might have a better idea if you're going to use a strap here, so feel free to put it on the ball of your left foot if you will. Otherwise, keep the left foot free, back stroke the left arm and bend the left knee to hug the right knee, and catch the inner side of the ankle or foot. Drop the tailbone, lift the heart, and kick the foot away while you keep both hips facing forward. Pull the left foot towards you, raising the right arm. Find the area right under the shoulder blades to coil your chest up for several more breaths. Natarajasana, dancer pose. Then gently step back to mountain pose, hands in prayer. Tune in, especially to your heart center. Now let's come down to our knees, entering our last two back bends. Camel pose, tuck your toes behind you and grab a block at least for this first one. Let's use it for lower back support. Hug the skinniest or medium width of the block between your knees and thighs. How to decide? Check out how wide apart your hips are and try to get your knees to be able to be that wide apart. Hug the block firmly and back stroke your arms. Place the hands on your lower back with fingertips face down. Press the pelvis forward gently so it remains directly above your knees, the whole posture. Lift the back ribs, stretch the tailbone down, actively lengthen the lower back. As you hug the elbows closer together, you can broaden the chest. With a deep inhale, lift your heart and roll the shoulders behind you. Find the area just under the shoulder blades to tilt your heart up and you're here for five to seven more deep breaths before you rise and lower to sit. If it's reachable without any strain, drop one hand to hold the heel right behind it, then switch heels and switch hands, or hold both heels. Camel pose, Ustrasana. When you're ready to come out, use the help of your hands on your lower back as you slowly lift the spine and then lower to sit, maybe on the block between the ankles in hero's pose. Pause for a few breaths. Notice how you feel. Okay, last camel. Take it on your own for five to 10 breaths. You could use the block or not. You could tuck the toes or go further and untuck the toes, but listen to your body. See how far is appropriate for you. We'll meet sitting. As you're sitting, I'll invite you into another breathing practice to help cool down and more deeply relax and tune inward. It's a brief pranayama called Samavriti Pranayama, box breathing. So make sure you're sitting in a way that you can breathe well, be relaxed. So you might close your eyes, do close the mouth and continue breathing through the nose, but very gentle breathing. Well, you're not really creating a sound, it's very soft. Box breathing goes like this. We'll inhale for four counts, hold the breath for four counts, exhale for four counts, and hold the breath for four counts. When you hold the breath, try to relax. Let's try a few cycles together and a few cycles on your own. 
Prepare to start by emptying this breath. Inhale, four, three, two, one. Hold four, three, two, one. Exhale, four, three, two, one. Hold four, three, two, one. Cycle two, inhale, four, three, two, one. Hold four, three, two, one. Exhale, four, three, two, one. Hold four, three, two, one. Cycle three, inhale, four, Hold four. Exhale four. Hold four. Try a couple more cycles on your own. And when you're done, relax into natural breathing. I invite you to lower onto your back, bending the knees. Let's come into a supine spinal twist. Slide your pelvis three to five inches towards the right edge of your mat and open your right arm wide on the ground. Bring your legs together, knees bent, feet off the floor and you can take it like this, or if you want a deeper twist, you can wrap the right leg over the left. Slowly begin to drop your knees to the left while you keep the right shoulder on the ground. You can catch your legs with your block if you need. If you need to deepen the release in your lower back, place your left hand on your right outer hip. And as you breathe out, press away your right outer hip so it tilts slightly towards the front edge of your mat. Tune in for a few more breaths. And gently roll back to center, uncrossing your legs. From there, slide your hips closer to the left edge of your mat and open your left arm wide. Grounding your left shoulder, lift your feet, either legs together if you did it that way the first time or wrap the left leg around the right. Slowly drop your knees to the right, keeping the left shoulder grounded. If you wanna add on, place the right hand on your left outer hip and gently press it away from you as you breathe out. and roll back to center and set your feet, drop the knees apart and bring the soles of your feet together in supine bound angle pose. And if your knees are lifting up uncomfortably away from the floor, place a block under each outer knee to support your thighs. Now let's stretch the shoulders one last bit more. So bend your elbows apart like the shape of a cactus, then cross the right elbow on top of the left elbow. Eagle arms. Hook your thumbs or wrap your forearms and palms. Slide the shoulder blades down your back ribs. Lift the elbows gently towards the sky and let the shoulder blades widen apart. 
Notice what you're feeling in any part of your body here that may be calling your attention. Especially in our physical yoga practice, this is part of self-study. Really sensing the subtle or not so subtle ways. Our bodies are constantly communicating truths to us. On your next exhale, open the arms apart into a cactus shape. Then cross the left elbow on top of the right into eagle arms. Draw the shoulder blades down your back ribs and lightly lift the elbows towards the sky. Notice what you're feeling here. Release the arms apart and bring your hands to your outer thighs, drawing your knees towards each other. Bend them towards your outer armpits into happy baby. Or straddle legs apart, straight, and clasp your big toes. Allow a few last clearing breaths, maybe some lion's breaths, or fluttering the lips, or sighing, or chanting, which can be soothing for your nervous system. Then draw your knees together into your chest. Maybe lift your head and shoulders and close your eyes as you squeeze in for a thank you hug to your body and self. Allow a deep breath to fill up every cell. Hold the breath in. Maybe squeeze a little tighter and sip in a little more air. When you're ready, open the mouth and let everything go. Release your arms and legs apart. Let your body take up space as you close your eyes and relax deeply into stillness and open awareness. Shavasana.
Bring your awareness back to your body and notice how it feels right now. (coughs) Start to move your fingers gently, wiggle your toes and see what other ways your body wants to begin moving and stretching to wake up. Eventually turn over onto your right side and rest your head there. Pausing to observe the quality of your breath. And sense how your energy feels now. Take your time lifting your body up. Rising to sit comfortably for five minutes, sitting in meditation. Closing the eyes if that works for you. And maybe stacking right palm over left, face up with thumb tips touching on the center of your lap to help steady your mind. Let's begin. Sensing your natural breathing. Let yourself sink into the background. of all the sounds around you. Of all the movement of sensations, emotions, or thoughts. Simply observing each as it arises and goes. Be the open awareness that you are. Just quietly listening to life unfold.
Sense how your mind feels now. Notice how you feel emotionally. Through your practice today, do you feel any degree of a deeper connection to your true nature, home? As you might join your hands in prayer at your heart and bow in, allow a moment to acknowledge anything and anyone you would like to appreciate right now. And then remind yourself of your intention for this practice. Also remember to whom you dedicated this practice. Let's join our voices to close the practice together with three chants of Om. Let in a deep breath. Um. towards your heart center. The light in me bows to the light in you. Namaste.